Hey guys, Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In this video, we'll be going over how to determine if a precipitate will form or not. The way to, to determine if a precipitate forms or not is just calculate the QSP and then compare it to the KSP. And if Q is less than K, a precipitate will not form. And if Q is greater than K, then a precipitate does form. Let's take a look at how those principle applies to two problems. So we'll start with this one. So in this one, it says that a solution contains this this concentration of C3 plus and this concentration of the IL3 minus, and then we're asked if this precipitate will form or not. So the first thing that we should do is we should just write the how this solid would dissociate, because whenever we're given KSP, the reaction is going to be the solid dissociating. So we'll start with CE IL3 solid, and then that's going to dissociate into the ions or break apart into the ions, and that's going to break apart into the C3 plus ion, aqueous, and three IL3 minus aqueous. So we know these are the ions because, well, the problems that give us the C3 plus and the IL3 minus, and there, oh, I forgot to transfer this three over. And then you see there's a three here, and that's why there's three over here. Because there's three IL3s in the solids, that's why we get three of the IL3 ions. Then we can set up the, the QSP expression. So QSP is just concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. This is the concentration of the C3 plus times the concentration of the IL3 minus, and then that's going to be cubed. The coefficients become the powers. And this is a solid, so we just write one on the bottom or we don't have to write anything on the bottom. Now we can plug in the concentration of C3 plus and the IL3 minus that was given in the problem. The concentration of the C3 plus is 2 times 10 to the negative 3. And then the concentration to IL3 minus is 1 times 10 to the negative 2. But there's a cube here, so we got to bring that cube down. Now, enter this into calculator, and you should get 2 times 10 to the negative 9. And if you weren't getting that, just try entering it with parentheses around it, and you should get 2 times 10 to the negative 9. Now, let's compare our QSP to our KSP. So we can write QSP over here, 2 times 10 to the negative 9. And then the KSP, it was given in the problem, it was 3.2 times 10 to the negative 10. So this is negative 9, this is negative 10, so that means that the QSP is greater than the KSP. And whenever Q is greater than a K, it means the reaction is going to go to the left. So that means the reaction is going to go to the left and is going towards the side of the solid. So that means we know that a precipitate will form here because Q is greater than K, or you could just think of the reactions going towards the solid side. All right, now let's take a look at the next problem. This problem is pretty similar to the, to the previous one, except this time we're mixing two solutions together. So we're changing changing the volume. It says that a solution is prepared by mixing 100 milliliters of this concentration of the lead nitrate with 100 milliliters of this concentration of the sodium fluoride. And then it's asking us, will PBF2 precipitate or not? We're gonna approach it the, the same way by first start by first writing the dissociation reaction of the possible precipitate BBF2. That's going to break up into PB2 plus aqueous and 2F minus aqueous. Uh, we know F is a negative charge because it's a halogen. And then if each of these are negative charge, it's a negative 2 charge. And that means that PB has to be a positive 2 charge to balance it out. Then we can write the QS QSP expression, just concentration of products over concentration of reactants, the concentration of PB2 plus times the concentration to F minus. There's a coefficient of two here, so we must square the concentration to F, F minus. And then this is a solid again, so we can just divide this by one or ignore it. For all QSP and KSP expressions, there's not gonna be anything on the reactant side, on, on the bottom. Then we have to plug in the equilibrium, I mean the concentration of the PB2 plus and F minus, but I can't just plug these concentrations. I can't just use this and this concentration because these were the concentrations when the volume was 100 milliliters each. But then I mix the two solutions and you change the volume. When the volume is changing, the concentration will also change. So we got to figure out the new concentration of the PB and the new concentration of the uh, of the F minus. And the way we do that, since the volume is changing, we can use the equation M1V1 equals M2V2 to solve for the new molarity or the new concentration. So that means that M2 is going to equal m1 v1 divided by v2 where v2 is the total volume so let's start by fi finding the concentration of, of the pb2 plus well the original concentration of the pb it's one 
times 10 to negative 2. The original volume of the, of the PB was 100 milliliters. And then the final volume, V2, was the 100 milliliters plus 100 milliliters. That's 200 milliliters. And then we can enter that into the calculator. And then you should get 0 0.005 molar of the PB2+. plus. Now let's do the same thing for the F-. minus. The original concentration of the F- minus is 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. The original volume of the F- minus was 100 milliliters. And then the final volume is the 100 milliliters plus 100 milliliters. So the 200 milliliters is the total final volume. And then let's also enter this into the calculator, and then we should get 0 0.0005 molar. OK, now that we have the concentration of PB and the F, let's plug that into the QSP. So the concentration of PB was 0 0.005, and then the concentration of F minus was 0 0.0005, and then we have to square that. And then that comes out to be 1.25 times 10 to the negative 9. Let's compare the QSP to the KSP. So the QSP 1.25 times 10 to negative 9 compared to the KSP, which is given right here, 4 times 10 to the negative 8. And so the QSP is less than the KSP, which means this reaction is going to be proceeding in the fourth direction. So it will be going to the side of the aqueous. And as a result, no precipitate forms because the Q is less than the K. And that's how you can determine if a precipitate will form or not, you can start by calculating the QSP and then comparing it to the KSP. If Q is less than K, no precipitate forms. And if Q is greater than K, then a precipitate will form. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.